Hello everybody and welcome to Wesley's Plant World with me, Wesley Peterson. And today I am standing out in the middle of the area of my garden called Sauna Land. And this is one of the newest creations I've made in my garden that I am so happy and pleased about because it's become the new area where I have my hosta collection. I used to have all my hostas placed out in Yorkim's corner and then I excavated out this area and I made a whole video about this and I did it when there were no foliage on the trees or bushes around me. It was completely bare and I had a lot to do. I had to dig out this space here, move rocks and then move all of my hosta pots here with no hostas in sight because they were still dormant. So make sure you go back and see that video because you're going to really appreciate the whole transformation of this area if you go and see that first now. So in front of me you can see a sea of different hostas and I am so pleased that every single one of these pots has come up again this year even though I've left the pots outside during the winter all year long with no extra protection and the temperature got down to minus 16 degrees Celsius and well look they've all popped up again because these are amazing robust plants. So I want to take you in for a closer look of the hostas, but this <laughs> is not the nicest hosta year for me because I've had to go out and save some of my hostas that I experimented with by planting out in different areas of my garden. And well, once again, that did not work. So some of those I've put back in pots here. They are full of holes. There is slug damage all over them. They've got broken leaves and so forth, but you can still make out the shape and color and what the hosta looks like. So, well, it's still part of the collection. Even though these are robust plants, one thing I've found is that if they get ruined at the beginning of the season, if they break, if they snap, if they get slug damage and so forth, they're not likely to produce new leaves. So they're going to be like that for the rest of this season. In my situation, that's how I've seen it. But if they manage to produce a lot more pups or so forth around a more mature plant, then those will be able to come up around maybe and fill out. But if you only have a few plants in a pot and they've got ruined, well, they're going to stay looking like that for the rest of the season. So it is quite important to protect your hostas early on if you want them looking nice through the season. Another thing I did here is I put my hostas out here in these pots and I let the wild plants grow up around them. So I had a lot of tall grass and dandelions and all sorts of things around these pots. So I'm just going to show you some photos here of what this area was looking like. And you can see it's quite overgrown. There's a lot of grass, there's a lot of all sorts going on and the hostas are really crowded in amongst all the wild plants. Now the problem with this was that it gave all the slugs a lot of ladders to climb up and bridgeways to get up onto my hostas and between pots and so forth. So I decided that that style doesn't work. I've had to go in and stream the whole area and then place out my pots so that there is plenty of space between them so that slugs cannot crawl from one pot to the other either. They are all separate. So they're all quite well spaced out so that slugs can only get up onto one pot at a time. And that will give my plants a fighting chance to stay better for the rest of this season. Now, as well as going in and streaming around the pots, I did go in and stream around the middle grass area so that this all looks neat and tidy and cleaned up my new boulder in the middle with the bird bath and everything and sprayed it all down so it looks nice and neat. And this is what I want it to look like. So there are lots and lots and lots of slugs and snails and so forth here. I can't go in and do anything about that. I just have to accept the way things are. So that is why this is the not so pretty Hosta collection <laughs> tour today. But you know what? I want to show the reality of it. This is what the reality is of having a hosta collection in a very wild kind of garden where there is a lot of biodiversity. And if I want to have a collection like this, well, I just have to 
accept my plants the way they look. I can come out and use a few remedies, but I haven't been here for two weeks and that's why my plants are also looking like they are. I haven't been able to come out here and put coffee around the edge of them or spray them with garlic and citrus and things like this and cinnamon and anything else you can put around the plants. I could also put some sand on the ground, grit or gravel or something like that. I might change it up a little bit later, we'll see, to help them keep looking as nice as possible. But anyway, I think some of them are looking perfect, some are looking almost perfect, and some are looking like they've seen better days. <laughs> Let's put it that way. So now let me get to the back of my lovely new sauna land garden area where I can sit on my bench and enjoy the view in front of me while you all go round for a closer look at the area and see how the wild plants are growing up well around the borders and how my bushes around me here, my hazelnut bushes, these Carula avellana are growing out their beautiful leaves around the edge, how my different trees above me have grown out their canopy and my bush on the side here which I'm sure is a kind of salix, maybe a salix capria is growing there. And then the understory plants with the ferns and everything else is going on so that you get a better understanding of how this area has changed compared to the first video I made that you absolutely must go back and see to see the difference between this. And in fact, while I'm sitting here, I'm just going to give a sneak preview of that. I want to show you how this area was looking as bare as can be, not a leaf in sight. And well, then you'll be able to appreciate just how it's looking right now. So look at all this, hardly any grass and hosta pots where you couldn't see any hostas and then the transformation back to the way the garden is looking now. And I am so pleased about this because I get to sit here and look at my annex and my crystal cottage and all of my hostas, just as I imagined this will be. The border growing up around the edge and I'm going to be planting out many more ferns along here now, I've decided. Wild plants that once I've put them in, I don't have to go and do anything. I don't have to water them. I don't have to worry about them being eaten down or anything like that. Different things like that around the edge. And I might plant in some things that get some flowers and then leave that to just look after itself. And then the only thing I would have to concentrate on is coming in and strimming the grass, spraying over my rock display area in the middle and looking after all of my hostas. Let's go in for that closer look. One of the ferns I've planted out here and I'll be planting a lot more of those out to come up in amongst the ground elder. A bench and then the brush fencing around the rock excavated in amongst the grass look at this the beautiful bird bath there and the water in this rock beautiful and then up towards our annex on the left and our crystal cottage on the right. All of the hostas. The edging over here. Ferns that I've planted out amongst the ground elder here. There you go, aren't they beautiful? And much further in, in the back as well. So this board is going to get better and better with time. It's absolutely beautiful. Look at the fronds on this beautiful fern. Gorgeous. For now, I'm letting this little Ace of Platinoides ride in the middle of the grass here. <laughs> the Norway maple. And then again, this beautiful rock display in the middle here. So down here the rock border and how many pots can you count? <laughs> because I know I have quite a few. Look at all the different colours. And at the same time listen to those birds. 
chattering away.
So I really hope you enjoyed seeing Sauna Land and the transformation compared to my first video when I was creating this area, as well as my hostas, how they're looking now and just appreciating them the way they are because not everything has to be perfect 100% of the time. You really need to start appreciating things for the way they are. And my hostas, because I can see the differences in them, the subtle differences so well, I really do appreciate what I get to see every year anyway. And now that I have been in and streamed and moved them around and give them more space and so forth, I know that the slug damage isn't going to be as bad from now on. And as I said, I can go in and spray them over with all sorts of deterrents to keep the slugs away because there's nearly nothing else that goes and munches down on my hostas. The snails, I never see snails on them, only slugs. I never see anything like different beetles or any other kind of insect. It's just the slugs. The hostas with the little bit thicker leaves, they survive the damage much better. And the ones with the thin leaves, they get eaten through quite quickly. So how could I end this video without showing you the beautiful view I have from my bench, which is behind the camera now, and then all the way up to our crystal cottage and our annex and my hostas behind me here. And the grassy area that's just getting better and better, the lovely little stone area and the bird bath in the middle has a beautiful display. And then my rock border that I excavated out here looking fabulous. And then all of my hostas in their pots behind. And this just makes me so, so happy. This is a very small corner of my garden. And this also shows what you can do in a smaller area. If you have a smaller garden of your own, you can create something that looks kind of foresty and wild. And if you have trees in your garden, you don't have to go and cut them all down. You can lift the canopies, light can get through, and then you can have some bushes around the edge and do something with some stones and have a grassy area so that you can be in the area and utilize it. Give a lovely border, get yourself some pots and make yourself a border. This border in front here will be full of plants with time. I'll probably be switching and changing that up as I feel fit because now it's become an area that I can really just put in whatever I want. I filled it with soil and my idea was that I was maybe going to plant out some hostas in this border, some miniatures, but I'm not going to do that seeing as the slug damage would just be horrendous. So all my hostas are staying up behind in their pots where they're much more protected and then I can change this up as I go along and that's just going to be beautiful and as I said more beautiful plants around the edges here. So it is amazing, the trees are gorgeous.
So you're going to have to come back again in the future as we see this area transform even more. I will, as I said in my previous video, be planting out many more Thea occidentalis Brabant bushes around the outer edge to give it an evergreen enclave in here. And for now, the hazelnut bushes are doing a fantastic job of filling out and making it cozy in here. I just love this. This worked out amazing. So I hope you've been inspired to go out and try a little something new in your own garden, on your balcony, or in any situation you're in where you can get your green fingers out and create something new. So all I have to say now is thank you very much once again for watching this video. Please remember to like, subscribe and hit the bell so you know when my next video will be coming up and I will see you again very, very soon. Goodbye.